Hi there. I'm here with Holly, Constable Holly Christie, and uh, this is actually the second episode of Strathcona Stories. How are you doing, Holly? Hi, Dan. I'm doing well, thanks. And hi, Strathcona. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Um, I, I started this series as a way for Strathcona residents to, you know, hear directly from people and organizations in their neighborhood to find out more about what's going on. Um, in their neighborhood. It, it was sort of spurred on by the, the COVID-19 crisis, but I think in general, it's going to be a great way to keep the community feeling a bit more connected and a bit more just in touch with what's going on. Mm -hmm. I love the idea. So thanks for inviting me. Excellent. Um, so I, I want to start off uh, by just asking you, with the current situation in Strathcona and everywhere really, but particularly in the downtown east side, uh, I'm very curious to know how it's affecting the average VPD officer on the beat, on the street, patrolling the downtown east side. Yeah, it's, uh, there's, there, a lot has happened in the last few months with uh, the pandemic. And um, I, I would, uh, I think it's safe to say that everybody's lives have been affected working and personal. Um, I know generally uh, speaking, our, uh, our officers are um, doing well um managing uh with how things are progressing through the the social distancing and the physical distancing and the uh, personal protective equipment and and all that um i think generally speaking and it does depend on the person i don't i certainly don't want to speak for everybody but i know that we're doing quite well and we're hanging in there and um we're doing it with the help of, of not only our employer, but the public as well. And so it's a real team effort, but I think generally speaking, we're, we're managing quite well. That's good to hear. Um, yeah. I know everyone here in the neighborhood appreciates what you're doing and we want to make sure you're taking care of yourselves as well. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Uh, so second question, um, and it's a bit of a longer one, <laughs> but I think it's important for us to discuss because it's something I hear about a lot in my, in my short time so far here in Strathcona. And I, I've heard uh, many times from residents who don't seem to see the point in reporting minor crimes and, and things that they see in their backyards, things like uh, bike thefts, vandalism, verbal abuse on the street, uh, trespassing, people roaming in their backyards or testing car door handles, things of that nature. And there seems to be this, you know, there's no point in me calling non-emergency line. It's going to take 45 minutes of my time and I never, never see anything getting done about it anyway. So what's the point? And I guess, how would you respond to people in this neighborhood that, that have experienced something like that and have that perception? Okay. Um, the, the, the big uh, message that I want everybody to take away from, well, one of the messages is that we do want to hear from you. Um, we, we as well live in communities when we're not working or when we're working as well. And um, we, we get it and, and uh, we do want to hear from you. Police do want to hear your, um, what you're seeing out there, what you're hearing. It's very important for us, as well as our community policing centers. Um, uh, I know that we really promote that. Uh, we want uh, to encourage neighbors, neighbor, neighborhoods and communities to also keep their community policing centers updated. But first and foremost, it absolutely is important to call. Um, not only that, there's, there's lots of different ways and I have had this conversation as the other neighborhood police officers have as well around reporting. Um, uh, and I heard it said the other day, um, and I don't want to sound cliche, but if we don't know about it, then we can't help um, the communities or we can't help somebody with a particular issue if we're not hearing about it. Not all the time, but quite often uh, that is the message we want to get out there is we do need to hear from you. So it, it's very important. And, and, you know, there are various ways that people can report. Um, we have um, extended the way that people can online crime do online crime reporting, for example. So what I so what I've told people is, you know, we do want to hear from you. Um, there's lots of reasons why we do for your safety, for our safety, for for the betterment of the communities out there, um, and for planning and getting resources that people and communities need. It's important. So there's 911. There's the non-emergency line. 
There's online crime reporting for, uh, you can report now. They've actually included more things that you can report on online. There's also Crime Stoppers that's anonymous, that's important. Um, so there's, there's ways, other ways people can report besides just calling 911. And the other thing I wanna say, um, uh, as far as calling the non-emergency, and uh, there is a part of that that uh, we do hear sometimes that can be frustrating. Maybe people call in and they have to wait. And, uh, at times, and I'm very comfortable saying that there are times where people are gonna have to wait on the non-emergency police line. And sometimes it does depend on what's happening in our city, in your community, um, but you will talk to someone eventually. So if you do have to wait, um, just know that we're, we do wanna talk to you and uh, we're just trying to prioritize, the, the dispatchers are just trying to, to deal with the calls at hand and they're dealt with on a priority basis. Sure. So we do wanna hear from you, absolutely. You're, you guys are the eyes and ears for us and we need each other. For sure. For sure, and that's a message I try to push as well. Um, yeah. Can you can you perhaps comment on on because what I hear from some from some people is that after they call and they give their report, sometimes they don't hear anything afterwards, and and they wonder sort of what happened. Okay, yeah. Um, sometimes uh, we are we go to a call or police are dispatch, and. Uh, for whatever reason, police, uh, we're not always able to uh, see the person that phoned. Uh, it depends on the call, uh, depends on the situation, it depends on the, um, it just, there's a few factors involved in that. Um, you most certainly, if somebody's phoned and they are concerned, um, and you say, say police, uh, people in a community, a person that phones actually talks to a police officer in person, they can ask uh, for follow-up. That's their right to ask uh, if the officer has time, if they can follow up with them and let them know. They'd appreciate that. Um, when they phone it in, they can actually say that. Um, they can also say, I would really like a phone call back if they can, and let me know if, you know, if they can, whatever they can tell me. Because quite often, there are times where we can't give a lot of information to yeah. people, but they can follow up. Um, I recommend not phoning 911 back unless it's an emergency or unless there's uh, someone's safety is at risk. Um, you can always, they can always phone the non-emergency line at 604-717-3321 if they did phone something in and ask uh, that they'd like an update or did they find them and, and the operators are very receptive to that. Okay. Um, okay. And okay. also if they do get a card or an incident number, they can call the police officer at the voicemail and leave a message and ask for follow-up. That's great. That's great. Yeah. And, and I've also actually been telling people, you know, feel free to contact us at the Community Policing Center and, and yes. we, can, we can do that follow-up as well. Exactly, Dan. And that brings me to something I don't want to forget as far as reporting. Um, absolutely. Our community policing centers, all 11 of them, are very, uh, we've worked very hard to have that relationship with, with all the community policing centers. And you guys are a fantastic resource for a lot of different things. And that is something absolutely that when I was a community police, uh, policing officer, I too would hear about that. Or like yourself, the um, executive director, you would, you would get those calls sometimes from people. And that's something that you guys absolutely um, could advise people to do as well. And then um, you can help them uh, get the support they need or maybe the answer that they need for sure. Excellent, thank you. That was more than an, enough information. Um, uh, changing tracks here. And my next question is specifically to do with uh, videos and, and photographs. Yeah. Um, obviously everyone has a camera nowadays in their pocket and as the community policing center, what we've seen is through different resident groups and, and groups within the neighborhood, there's a lot of sharing of photos and videos, of people saying, you know, I saw this person testing their car door handle or this person was acting really suspiciously, watch out for them. Um, should people be attempting to photograph or videotape people if they think a crime's being committed and, and what should they do with those photos and videos? Okay, we get that a lot. Um, we hear about it. Um, I know it's the day of, of social media and cameras and everything. We always tell people that you want to, the best thing that you can be for us, if you do want to help us, is the eyes and ears. And, you're, and, and absolutely the first, the, the most important thing is, is your safety. 
Uh, we want to tell people that you, you have to report, we want you to report things and be safe in your communities. So safety first. Um, secondary would be if, if you can, because we do have programs like Block Watch where we ha if, if you can do something in a safe way, um, and say, for example, you're in your house, you're behind, you're, you're, you're not afraid that anyone's going to see you and you believe you can take a picture of something safely um, from the privacy of your home or in a safe manner so that your safety, then, you know, we don't want to start directing people to do that, but that would be a safe way of doing it. Um, and of course, the second thing would be, we need you to, that information to come to us first. So it needs to go to police first. Uh, we know um, people are very passionate because I am, and I speak for myself, but I'm very passionate about the community I live in. I know you guys are too. Um, so again, um, reporting for sure. If you can safely take a picture and you feel that it would really help, if you, if you can do it in a safe way, great. But then we need that information first. Sharing it, um, it just depends. Sometimes there's an investigation in something uh, with the report and uh, it could potentially um, be detrimental to an investigation, but I don't want to complicate things. So I would say uh, it's not necessary to take photos and videos of crimes. We need to hear from you first. Perfect. Okay. That's yeah. Great advice. Um, moving along, and I think the next issue I wanted to talk about was something that people that live in Strathcona for a long time know all too well, and that's uh, campers in the neighborhoods. And it's not unusual for Strathcona residents to find campers or mini tent cities in different neighborhoods or parks around Strathcona. And with the anticipated actions at Oppenheimer Park, that is the rehousing of individuals into temporary uh, hotels or, or other situations uh, for their protection, uh, how would you recommend that residents deal with this situation right now if they see new camps pop up in other locations of Strathcona, such as public community gardens or on private property or on business property? Is this something that you recommend people report to the police if they're not hurting anyone or there's no obvious crimes being committed? You know, if, if, there, um, if there is something uh, that you're concerned about, I always tell people if that question is asked, um, are you concerned about the person? Um, are you concerned about their well-being? Um, are you concerned about your safety? Um, you know, sometimes that uh, will provide people, when, when we ask those questions uh, to people that are concerned in communities, it answers the question for them. I always bring it back to safety. You know, if something is happening on your property, in your yard, um, for sure you have a right to, you know, if you're suspicious about it, I would tell people to call that in. If you're concerned about someone that may be setting, um, that, that looks like they might need some assistance or they look confused perhaps and you're concerned about their well-being, uh, whether they have a bunch of property on them and they're looking maybe to set up or um, they're sleeping, you know, it's on your property and it concerns you, then you can for sure, and we would hope that you would call us in. Uh, it, when it, when it affect safety um, of yourself or you're worried about that person, for sure call it in. If it's something that you're seeing, say on a business uh, or on a, a sidewalk in your neighborhood, these are good things to, um, again, if you're not concerned but you're noticing more of it, um, whether it be uh, more graffiti, uh, this is stuff that you could bring to um, your community policing center. Um, but for things that are happening in the moment, in front of you, um, those need to be called in right away. And uh, of course, safety, absolutely, um, phone that in. But if it's just a, something there, you feel like you need to let police know or the, the neighborhood policing center know, then that you can, exact, there's two different ways they can do it. But I would say safety needs to be phoned in because you're concerned about them or yourself or phone it into your local community policing center to, to, to advise them and just give them a heads up and let them know because that's good information to know too. Okay. Hopefully that helps. And yeah. the other thing is um, uh, on telling you guys, uh, but also with advising us police, if you're concerned about something, we do have a, home, a homeless outreach coordinator, a dedicated police officer that works with uh, various agencies throughout the city uh, it, with members and with other organizations, non-police related 
um, that we can connect with, that members can connect with if they do go to check on the well-being of this person, or that you can, um, when you give us that information, the community policing offices give us that information, we can do that background work and get them the support uh, they need as well, so. Yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad you mentioned that because we do have that yeah. contact and I'm happy to connect people with them. Perfect. Okay. Um, lastly, it's kind of a general thing, but yeah. what can residents do right now in the situation we're in to help make their neighborhood a safer place for them and, and their neighbors? You know, uh, I, I always, I, again, report. I know we're talking a lot about reporting. They can uh, not be afraid, try not to be afraid about reporting and, and go on um, bpd.ca, uh, try and look through our, our, at least for Vancouver, look through our website, go into community placing, find out where your, one of the things people can do is find out where their uh, local community policing center is. They can find out where you are, uh, hours, um, other things and tips that they can do to be safe. All the community policing centers do this. Um, they can, um, a block watch, uh, they can look at maybe setting up a, a neighborhood block watch. We have a neighbor, uh, we have a block watch coordinator at Vancouver police that would be happy to um, come in, into the community policing center and speak with a, a group from a particular block that are looking to set that up. I know that they often get, um, as the community policing center does, your center does, they too can forward um, crime tips, like crime prevention tips and updates regularly. So they can do something like that and just get out and like I said, be eyes and ears for the community, um, but be safe. So they can, they can, you know, help us and help themselves and do it in a safe way. But A, we need to hear from them and B, they need to be safe. Love it. And yeah. the people out there, if, if you're interested in this kind of thing, please go and come and chat with us. Uh, there's lots of ways we can help you. For sure. And just finally, again, I wanted to express my gratitude and appreciation from all the people that have come to me, I see in the street or that call me to thank you for everything you're doing, all the frontline workers right now. Um, Thanks, Dan. Just thank you I'll so much. I'll pass it on. <laughs> thank yeah, you so no much. Problem. And thanks no, for no, doing it. You're very welcome and uh, thanks for having me again. A great idea and uh, I just want to say keep up the good work. Um, all the communities, but I know Strath Strathcona, hello and just keep doing what you're doing and uh, doing a great job. So thank you, Dan. Excellent. Well, thanks okay. again very much and follow, you're very welcome. follow you on Twitter. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> thanks. Bye. Bye.